Apologies to everyone waiting. Thank you for all being patient. Um, I think we all are getting used to doing uh, a lot of our life online and stuff, and it's, it's not always easy to organize everything. So um, we are going to get right into it, Dr. Jeannie. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, I'll give you a little brief introduction, just what I have written up on the website for those of you who probably already um, interacted with some of the material we put out. Dr. Jeannie uh, was the first registered naturopath in British Columbia. Um, she is of Coast Salish uh, lineage and she's a herbalist. She has been a healer her whole life and been uh, connected to plants and plant medicine. Um, through her family lineage and I'm so happy to have her here today talking about intergenerational trauma and the effects on the heart system. So welcome Dr. Jeannie. I raise my hands to all of you that are being so patient. I, I appreciate your time as well. I get right into it and I, as she said, I am I am a practicing naturopathic physician here in BC, but mainly I concentrate my, uh, my practice to teaching traditional medicines throughout the territories of BC. So, but because of COVID now, I'm able to only teach through Zoom uh, once a month. But pretty much what I want to say here is we're talking about mental health as this whole conference apparently is about and how to keep your health intact during these times, whether it's COVID or any other, other pathologies that, that people may be suffering from. So I wanted to share with you this huge thing about cardiovascular system and where I know that in my village you were plagued with cardio problems and I've been studying this for many years. And so we know that without the heart, we're not able to, to function. We're dead if our heart stops. We know that it has so many functions, as you know, to bring blood and oxygen to every part of our body to keep it pumping and support our immune system. It has many, many jobs. And what I call my 12 screaming we have um, 12 body systems and cardiovascular is only one of them. And I call them my babies, my 12 screaming babies that say, mama, my heart hurts, mama, my skin itches, mommy, my tummy hurts. So each of these systems speak on their own. So today I want to just concentrate on what the, what the heart is trying to say and what the newest studies say about cardiovascular system. And you may be familiar with this, but if you can uh, follow with me anyway, uh, about 10 years ago in Japan, these 12 cardiovascular people specializing in heart disease discovered the shape of the heart. The shape of the heart was totally different from the apical. The heart is like this, as you know, it's flatter at the top and it's the shape of the heart when we draw one and it's pointed at the bottom and at the bottom it's called the apex of the heart and the top is the base. So these studies they found that indeed the bottom was almost square. It was flattened out. It was ballooning it was called and they couldn't figure out why this was so. And it looked similar to this, if you could see my jar here, see the flat bottom of the jar and there's a narrow top. And this is what made me think of this. And they likened this picture they saw on their images that was like their jar, which they called the Taktusubo trap. The tak Taktusubo trap traps when they're fishing they put this out to trap octopuses and squids into their trap and once they're inside they can't get out and so if you look at the shape being very flat at the bottom then it points to the top so what they found was it looked like their trap line which is called the taktusubo and they called it taktusubo cardiomyopathy which was very interesting because they kept studying this and found out indeed 
the people who they had interviewed to find out why this was happening to them was that they had broken heart. To me, that is fascinating. And imagine in Western medicine saying that there is an emotional component to my pathology so that it's not just a bug or something that we're afraid of or, or we're growing a tumor or whatever our body is doing. This happens to uh, be affected by an emotional element, which is, of course, caused by grief. So the whole premise of their study was they found out that the uh, Dr. Subo cardiomyopathy in all their years of study found out this was big time from broken hearts. And broken heart, what is that from? It's from grief, <laughs> excuse me. So we suffer as native people or any peoples, we suffer so much from the stresses of grief, we lose something, our children, our husband, our wives, our jobs, our, or your husband runs off with somebody else or your wife runs off with somebody else and you're left with a broken heart. So according to the studies, this changes then the shape of the heart, which becomes ballooned at the bottom. So that fascinated me because for years, I understood when people come to see me that they filled with pain and sorrow, what I call the miasm of residential schools, the miasm of, uh, of uh, co colonization, and all those pains that go generational, generational, that eventually affect us and becomes a pathology at the end of so many happenings in our life becomes a pathology as this has become a broken heart syndrome. So years ago, I did produce a formula and when somebody comes to me and they have lots of problems besides high blood pressure, cholesterol, their feet are swelling, etc. And I treat them what I called with my formula with a, what I call the broken heart I called it broken heart syndrome way before they did this, um, this study. So I was very um, happy to know I certainly was on the right path in terms of the Western study. And I was doing my own study with just having been with my patients. So, so what is this? What is this? Uh, this mechanism then that causes you then um, this change. And so many things happen, of course, when we're not well, or when we're trying to, um, to keep up with life, the stresses of life, the stresses of this, especially the grief. And this surge of adrenaline or norepinephrine or the extremes of secreting these, uh, these neurotransmitters does cause a change which triggers, of course, increasing your blood pressure or just lessening the oxygen content of your heart. And at the bottom of this, of the heart where it's supposed to be apex at the bottom, are the ventricles. And the ventricles there is what enlarges what enlarges the bottom of the heart instead of being pointed, it widens because of the stress it's causing with decreased oxygen intake and decreased blood flow to it. So these ventricles are screaming, they're having problems, you can't breathe, you have chest pain, you have, and of course you also have the heart pain from your losses, so. And this can lead to many things. And the heart muscle, of course, isn't functioning. It's supposed to go. It contracts and enlarges, and it goes lub-dub, lub-dub, and there's a flow, and there's a regularity to your breathing, a regularity to the beat of the heart. So to me, that's very, very, very telling of what it is then we should do. And of course, I immediately 
replace, of course, the restaurant medicine right now, of course, they're trying to develop drugs now to help with this broken heart syndrome. And I'm going, no, 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 no. So, so I've looked into this very carefully, of course, with our traditional medicines. And indeed, we're in the studies that I've done and with my students, and I have a three year, I have a three year program that I have developed to study our traditional medicines from the beginners to the intermediate level to the advanced level. And one of the things that we studied a really a lot, especially in early spring from March, April, May, June, these uh, plants that we harvest have a very deep affinity for this, this heart trouble we're having. It fits into that pain of the heart, the chest pain, the high blood pressure, the increase of your, of your um, the pains and the swellings in your body, et cetera. There are many, many symptoms to this and they do a lot of heart tests and monitorings to help you, the EKGs, blood work, angiograms, echocardiograms, et cetera. But, um, but for me, in looking at the result of what it is, these medicines that we take, and one of them is huge, and it's this plant. And this plant is called calamus, or rat root. And our people use this rat root, and I'm sorry, you can't see it as big as you should be able to see, but so the, the people dug this, the root system is very, they have two root systems, and this is one long one, and they can grow about, depending how long they've allowed it to grow. And they look like, when you're looking for them, they look like the uh, cattails you see. You know what cattails look like. That's another medicine our people used. But on the side, the difference between a cattail breed is that they have this ear. What I, if you can see, it looks like an ear sticking out on the side of a cattail, let's say. And that tells you the difference between a cattail and rat root. And so, so our people chew this. It's a, it's a very strong taste to it, uh, but that's, it's pretty much used as a post-stroke medicine. I use this for my patients, for people who have cardiovascular troubles, especially after they've had their stroke and they are now hemiplegic or having trouble with their one side of their body. So one of the medicines for this Taxasuba syndrome is this which is cattail. The, the nickname our people gave it is, it's called rat root for short. And it's only because it was eaten not by rats, but by muskrats. The muskrats were very fond of this plant and especially the Cree people and the people up north saw that the muskrat love this plant to eat this and they thought it must be good for something. That's centuries ago when they were chasing the muskrats and taking their hides. So what they did was they took these plants and brought them closer to their villages so they wouldn't have to go miles and miles and kilometers to go find this plant. And so it grew in British Columbia. Unfortunately now, in the whole of British Columbia, because we haven't been very conscientious or ecologically conscious about our plants. There are only nine plants left. And probably I have another nine in my back porch right now. It's, it's the only plant here in BC, which is very sad. But it is excellent for the heart. It's called calamus. The second one that is huge is called bitterroot. I'm talking about these medicines that would help reverse this, this Taxasubo effect of ballooning at the bottom of your heart, you see? So these medicines, our traditional medicines will help to reverse this. And another one, huge one would be this one, it's called 
Bitterroot. And many of you on the watch, you may know this already. I call this the little man. Ready Viva, it's called, because after it sits around, it can bloom again. So it looks like a little man. It has hair at the top and it's inside its middle of its chest. If you opened up when it's fresh, you'll see a real shape of a heart, it's red. It's just fascinating. And the skin is red. So the premise I work on about that is that I've adopted in the early, early 1400s, Paracelsus said this. He said, that which it looks like is what it will cure. That which it looks like is what it will cure. He was a famous man in Europe at the time, traveled through Europe. He was a precocious young man, very intelligent, studied all the herbals of Europe for eight years before he came with this, that the characteristics of the plant on the outside resembled that which was inside the plant. And that's exactly what our people did as well. So that these people, the same idea, that they use this for the heart as well. The bitter root, the calamus, or the rat root for the heart. Not because it was red, they didn't say that, but they just knew from their experience that the red would help. So in other words, many of the plants that may be red will be affecting your blood and your heart, etc. Is it as simplistic as that? No, it isn't. You have to study them, of course. The third plant that I have in my formula for this heart is, is called Critagus oxycantha, which is the heart medicine that's in the world. We have our own, our own subspecies of Critagus. And so we have the berries. Um, the berries are red right now a flower with white flowers. And of course, and the, the ones that grow here in British Columbia, which is called Critagus douglasii, has very, very long thorns. And these are rife. These are rife in the Okanagan territory. It's just amazing. They, how they grow there, wild. This is ours, the native people use this plant. And again, they used it for heart troubles. So in other words, what, they, what we've done then is I've just gone through three things here. Of course, there are many other traditional medicines we use for the heart. But those I find for the short time I have with you that, that these three medicines are so huge to help with the heart so that if I am swelling, if my ankles are swelling, I can't put my ring on anymore. And no matter how many high blood pressure pills I take or cholesterol pills, which you're taking now for the rest of your life. And why are we doing that when we can do our medicines to help us? So then if you have then mending your heart with physiological medicines, like these three plants will do physiologically, to heal the heart from this square bottom so it becomes apical again, using these three plus some other ones, how do I then make my heart happy? Do you know what I'm saying? So that you're not <sighs> sighing from grief. <sighs> We're not always crying from the sadness we feel when we go in our back room by ourselves and we are reminded by pictures that we keep looking at, or we play records over and over that remind us that I'm sad. So, oops, I didn't mean to push any buttons here. So anyway, so we have then to make the heart happy. So I do have made other formulas then when my heart is mended to lift up your heart, to lift up your spirit, whether you're a child, a child that's nine years old who lost his father, a child who his father didn't say goodbye and he died suddenly 
and now he's developed, he put his grief into his head. A nine-year-old native boy put his into migraine so that he is on heavy medication. They put him to sleep once a month so he could sleep because he can't sleep for the pain. So we have to then change the physiology of the heart, but also lift the heart. And the medicines are, there are, we're rife also with medicines that help to lift the heart. Some of them aren't necessarily our traditional medicines, but certainly they do um, lift the heart. And you probably know this already, but I'm going to go over it again anyway. So one of the hugest here, of course, is called Mother Wart. Leonora's Cardiaca, it's called. And when you're in my class, I give a very detailed description of this medicine. Its name, its family belongs to, because I feel that as students, we're very clever Indians, clever native people who can learn this. You want to learn why it works. What is the chemistry of that plant to make it different from each other? And how do I use it? Once I have this information, how will I use motherwort then? So motherwort really was considered by our native people in a big way to help, you know, to just as it, it was considered a mother's medicine, it was considered, and it was to help for grief and sadness. It's huge characteristic of a plant. And each plant has its big picture. I will help with this. Then I do many, many other jobs below that. I'm not only one thing. I don't say, Devil's Club just does arthritis. And then you say, what else does it do? And you go, I don't know. No, that's not how you study these plants. You study all the other duties, the action of this medicine, and the uses of these medicine besides being an anti-inflammatory or, in this case, to help with grief, sadness, high blood pressure, and many other duties that this does. So one of my formulas to make my lift your spirit formula, or I call it my broken heart formula, is motherwort, is huge that I added to that. And each medicine that I make takes 30 days, and that's part of the class I teach when we harvest a medicine. It takes 30 days for that medicine to cure, to let out its medicinal qualities, to fall into a solution. It has to do that in order to fall this motherwort, the chemistry of motherwort to fall into a liquid. And it takes 30 days to do this. And one of the hugest thing our people have is the Nootka rose. The Nootka rose that you see on the side of the road that's pink. That was first identified, of course, uh, the Nootka area, the west coast of British Columbia the wild rose, and it became very, very famous because of these people who came from, you know, Europe to supposedly conquer, you know, British Columbia and our Canada or our nations, our lands, and come to find out that this also not only is an anti-inflammatory, it's called a vulnerary or or anti-inflammatory to take away the inflammations of what's going on. And it's also pinkish red. So again, that which it looks like is what it will cure. Another one that I use is ocean spray. This will help. Ocean spray is just starting to come out now. I harvested one of the plants yesterday or, or a couple of days ago. Our people call it the iron wood, and you'll find it probably in your territory. And one of the hugest jobs that ocean spray has, of course, is for upper respiratory troubles, which means a very effective for COVID right now, or pneumonia, or colds and bronchitis. 
but also it's huge for that feeling of disconnectedness. You know that word, when we're not happy, we're disconnected from this world, we're disconnected from our daily life that we have to lead. And it becomes so you become disconnected so people don't recognize you because of your sadness and your grief. So ocean spray is a huge medicine that I could put to help with this to make you a little happier. Another huge one our people used was the lilac. And I harvested mine a couple of months ago already, the buds of the lilac. It's huge, huge also for cardiac insufficiency, which is what's happening with the, remember the apex of the heart? Hmm? Insufficient oxygen, insufficient blood, so that it squares itself rather than be apical. So all these qualities that you, you, we know of that would help with um, lifting your spirit, but physiologically at the same time, healing your heart. So for me, healing the heart is huge. And how do I do that is, of course, as I said, following these uh, medicines that play a big role. And the last one I'll mention here is, of course, it doesn't really belong to us, but it is spreading in North America, is holy basil. Holy basil. And I grow mine only because I get it from the nursery. And it's only $4.99 and it's go into a huge, huge bush. And the holy basil itself is a very interesting plant. Of course, many of these plants were brought in from Europe years ago. And our people eventually adopt and make use of these plants and, and stick their own, what it helped their people with. And many times it coincided with what the main studies show. That's what makes me so excited that we certainly went far off and are using our medicines for whatever purpose. And it matches what Western studies are showing. And that's what my teaching is about, is that I want to correlate and join the Western approach with our medicines and see the similarities between and then meld the two together to help with the healing of whatever screaming child we're working with. And so my next class I'm going to teach is on the respiratory system, which what is our medicines for that? We have so many and creator, creator is so clever to say from December, January, February, March, all these plants we're harvesting have to do with the upper respiratories. And he thought it out and said, we'd be full of colds and flus, bronchitis, runny nose, fevers all winter. So let's grow these plants. So I start harvesting December 26 with the cottonwoods. So, but that's not the topic, that's a whole different thing, but that'll be my next Zoom class this Saturday regarding that screaming child that speaks to what, what it is that is next in line. But interesting, I want to say this about healing is this, the premise that I follow and that has been very true for these 25 years or more I've been practicing is this, is that I liken, if I can be simplistic about this, I liken it to my, those that are old enough, I'm 80 years old, so I can say a lot of things about what 80 year olds have experienced, right? <laughs> so the LP records, what I call my LP record of tunes, you know, the, the vinyl records, the big long vinyl records that we don't do anymore, and you put your needle on the outside, don't you, when you play your LP record and you go, la, 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 la. And that's the tune that you then heal or cure. Because at the beginning, when you come into this world and you're coated with the DNA of mother, father, 
grandmother, grandpa, great grandma, and we're coded with that DNA right at the start when we come in this world. I'm stamped with my asthma. I'm stamped with my parents' eczema, psoriasis. I'm stamped in the forehead with my family's cardiovascular, which is called your miasm. So as we go along, another tune shows up. Another tune, because each time you have trauma happen to you, the body lays that down. So that, as I said, I come to this world with DNA. Let's take the example of the nine-year-old. The first layer of his song, of his record, is he loses his father. He's nine years old. He's in horrible pain, can't go to school. And he and I are crying because I lost my father when I was six years old and I watched him drown in front of me, which affected me the rest of my life. And this little boy is nine years old who suffered to see his father die and the father never said goodbye. So he develops his problem by giving himself this very deep heart pain with migraine. And if that isn't healed, these 12, 13, 14, each time you go and it's not healed, you develop these layers, if you, speak, if you, if you could say, this song, this next tune, this next tune, and finally you come to me and you're 60, you're 70. So this outside song you're telling me now is my heart troubles. I've had a stroke. I've had this. I'm on... I'm on these pills, I'm on this, I'm this. So we have to treat then the outside part of your screaming child. And the next tune will come up, what I call my next song, will show itself, mom, it's my turn now. They're all waiting in line. All these pathological buildups you've done through the years, it has ripple effect, you see has a tremendous, tremendous ripple effect through our whole lives so that at the end, when you come and you say, I want to kill myself, Dr. Jeannie. No, sweetie, we don't want to do that. We're, I'm going to cry. I'm going to be so sad. Your kids will be sad. The whole world will be sad. We do want to do that. Let's do something else. So when you are so heartbroken with that development but along with the pain of your grief, you see? And so many of us in our villages are grieving. People dying by the dozens through overuse of drugs, through their own pathologies that nobody looked after through all these years and now they're 40 and they on drugs or they commit suicide. It, it is phenomenal and it's, um, sad it grieves me i cry at night and pray for these people who who haven't found that answer for them but but if we could understand what our medicines can do and what it has to offer for us to heal and listen to that screaming baby listen to that screaming baby and get something done with it and not suppress it with drugs or suppress it mind you I'm not, I'm not degrading any pills you might be taking. I'm saying this probably saved your life wherever you are that you're taking your blister pack of pills. It saved your life. But is there a way we can slowly withdraw from these so that you can start using our medicines that are out in the back 40 of your property and we just have to know what they look like? And how do I make these medicines? So when we make these medicines, not only as tea as our people did, or they turned it into ashes to put on their wounds, or they took their sap and they dried it and they put it on wounds to heal. So what I've done with our medicines, I've taken it to the levels that are out in the Western world, like in spirits, let's say, or into gemotherapies the newest forms of medicine that are out there in the world. And I'm translating. 
I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so these medicines and then transposing it into our medicine to make it even to help you. Um, okay. Is somebody talking here that wants to say something? So anyway, it's I'm so Ciel, am I to continue? Is okay? It is fine. Sorry about that, Dr. Jeannie. It, I think somebody just accidentally unmuted themselves, so it's all good. Continue, please. Yes. I, so, so if we can then follow, I was just going to say, if we can then, hopefully, if you know some of the medicines, but if we can learn it to a very incredible deeper depth than we know now, so that we have more knowledge as to how these medicines work. Um, they are phenomenal. By the time you finish third year with me, we've learned 200 traditional medicines. So it's huge. It, it's still, I'm still teaching some more. Uh, there's so much to learn. And, and how do we use these medicines so, so that it helps the conditions that we have, that we've developed through being so civilized as we are we are so civilized that we're like the rest of the world now. We have everything that everybody has in the world now. We're not, we haven't been exempt from it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We haven't been exempt. We, we've caught everything that everybody has. In fact, we're so scared now that we have COVID or it's invaded us. What are we going to do? So I've developed formulas for the COVID now, anti you know, because right now it's antiviral that's attacking. How then do we stop this virus from injecting its RNA and DNA material into the cells of my body, you see? So that's where that's at. So in, in going back to what I was saying about this healing then, if we could understand the premise that our people use, much, much like what Paracelsus said that, which it looks like is what it will cure, is a huge, huge premise to start with. It's huge. And I do follow that very carefully. I study it as well. And I don't just say those words lightly. I also look into it. I research it as well and not and to prove that it is correct as well, you see. So it's not um, following something blindly, you see. I'm not sure if this is the time to, because I could talk eight hours on this, you see. <laughs> I just go on talking about things, but um, is it, is it, it's 2.30 now? Uh, Are you okay with is, is, Are they leaving now? Or they, if we opened up to questions, if anyone has any questions, yes. that would be wonderful. If anyone has any questions, um, so you can enter it into the chat. Uh, there is a question from uh, Nelina, huh? Dr. Jeannie, and she says, for people mm -hmm. who are trying to heal their grief and broken hearts with alcohol and drugs, do you give your medicines to them or, and do they work with or interact with alcohol and drugs? For sure. So the thing is that what has caused this, um, it is true that you have a dysfunction that's happening. I do alcohol or how is it that I'm going to stop this? Why is this addiction happening? We have to find the cause of this addiction. Why have I turned to this? And maybe you have to replace it with something slowly add something to do with. And I do in depth, of course, interviews with people who, when did this start? When did my alcoholism, so when did I run away from home and start drinking? I want to get away from the sexual abuse. I want to get away from physical abuse. I want to get away from dysfunction. So one dysfunction led to another and now I'm an addict. You see, it's a huge question, but it doesn't mean that we can't start somewhere, of course. you. It interacts with each other. Do you find it, you. that the formulas that you use for healing the heart, do they interact negatively with drugs and alcohol at all? Or can they be used alongside? 
you can use it alongside, but I always warn them, I would say this might not, if the alcoholism is too profound, it might overtake what I'm trying to do. So if they're willing to try to give it a break, you see, but of course, maybe what I would start off is to give the medicines that would, uh, the medicines that have to do with stopping this craving, you see, maybe that's what we have to start. Then once you've got less craving, then heal the broken heart or heal then the injury to what I've done to myself because there'll certainly be 12 screaming children, right? 12 body systems will be affected. Um, there's another question here, Dr. Jeannie. Could you repeat which herb you recommended for anti-inflammatory help? Oh my goodness. For anti-inflammatory? It depends what the anti-inflammatory is. If we're talking about, let's say, as most people will have, is arthritis, if you can ask that person, anti-inflammatory, huge, huge, no matter what you have, is, uh, of course, Devil's Club. Devil's Club, of course, because of its chemical constituents to help as an anti-inflammatory, but also will help other uh, conditions that you have. But, but again, you'd have to be more specific about anti-inflammatories because the conditions are varied. I can't say, this is a cookie cutter, you know, anti-inflammatory, you know, for everything. You'd have to say, I have, I have uh, boils, I have acne, I have uh, carpal tunnel, I have uh, gallbladder problems, I stomach trouble. See, they all have their screaming child saying what's wrong with each of these systems. So the medicines would have to fit to that, you see? But again, I could say one huge one is that Devil's Club is huge. That would probably fit. I think uh, Judy added a little bit to her question saying that she was asking um, about joints specifically. A what? About joints, her, her joints. Yes, joints. And there's so many joints. Uh, are people used that were for joints, building your joints, your bones. Um, it, it's so she might, because this talk is so short, as I said, I talk for eight hours at once without a break. My students are going, does she ever eat or pee? Because <laughs> we're so busy trying to, I only have eight hours with you, you see, and so I will talk straight through. But again, um, you could give her my phone number, you know, um, my email address, and we could talk. I do give um, consultations by phone, and I mail medicines out to the people in the community in the world um, in BC. That was actually not so another question that was someone was asking how they might book an appointment with you. Um, yes, your, yes. Or your website is Red Shawl Woman. Is that correct? Uh, www.redshawl.com gives you my phone number, yes, and my email address as well, www.redshawl.com. I have a clinic downtown on uh, Chilliwack. I've left, I used to work for Stolo Nation, but they closed their doors for months, and um, so I didn't renew my contract with them. I worked on reserve lands. Dr. Jeannie, there's another question here. How do you prepare the Nootka rose um, to use as an anti-inflammatory? Is it a tea from the rose hips yes. of, or the leaves? Yes, that's, that's true. Um, if you can hear me, how I look at the plant is this. The whole plant is medicine. If you can think of the plant with root systems, rhizomes, our rhizomes run along the ground, roots go down, okay? So here's what I call father down below. Here's father scrounging around, making a living for his family. Here comes mother, the stem, right? 
Here comes mother, the stem fed by father. Mother comes along and produces branches, flowers, and seeds, you see. So there's a whole family of medicine. So I take every part of this medicine. So and the back to the question of the red rose, the Nutrica rose. Of course, concentration of the chemical constituent of the vitamin C that's huge in, is in the hips. So I just did mine two months ago. So I dry all this for the winter because it doesn't, it, it'll last for a few more months yet, but you dry all this. So I will, and in my class, I teach you then seven different methods of how to make medicine by bringing in the technology of the outside world so that we're not just making tea. Huh? We're not, we're talented people to learn many other ways of making medicine because the medicine, if you can think of it, this red rose, the leaves, the stem, the thorns on the stem and the roots all are medicinal. And they have to spill what I call, it has to spill its guts into my solution. You see? And it takes 30 days for that to do. So if you can listen to my words, so that if you have, that's your medicine 101, where, how does this medicine, how do you make medicine? That's first of all, to take 30 days and let it spill its guts into my solution or my menstruum. So listen to this, so that if I have devil's club and I've powdered it, like some people are doing, they powder and powder it and put it in capsules right? Double odd capsule. And then they ask you to take this devil's club capsule three times a day. Can you tell me now that you know about medicine, has that medicine that's in the capsule helped you when it takes 40 hours? Listen carefully. 40 hours, the screaming baby, which is the digestive system, takes, you swallow this devil's club pill or the red rose hip pill, swallow it into your digestive system out the 30 feet of, di of intestines and out as, you know what it comes out as, right? So that it takes 40 hours. Do you think you've used much of your red rose? Do you think you've used much of your devil's club in 40 hours? If it takes 30 days for it to spill its guts, do you understand? You hear what I'm saying? So that once you understand how medicine works, you'll never take another supplement because uh, you're having expensive, you know what, going out your toilet. Expensive, you know what. So I don't saying this lightly, only because you have to understand medicine making. And tea is only one form. Thank you. <laughs> It's a long roundabout, sorry, about your Nutica Rose, yeah. That was great. Go ahead. Um, Dr. Jeannie, are your fees covered um, as a naturopath by FNHA or through MSP? Uh, I don't know. Nobody's ever done that. They come and they, and I'm very reasonable. I only charge 50 bucks for a $150 visit. I'm very, I'm very busy. So because it's very reasonable and I will never get rich that's for sure <laughs> but some people apply to them and you can give your bill to them and see if they cover it um, some people will give them their receipt and they'll take it to the band to get maybe a refund but it's very it's best if you go approach your band and say I want to see Dr. Jeannie Paul we're going to talk on the phone uh, will you cover her visits with my medicine she will give me and her visit, you might ask that beforehand. You know, some people do that so that you're not disappointed if they say no, you see. We're getting some thank yous in the chat box, um, Dr. Jeannie, for your, your expert knowledge on medicine. You are so amazing and so inspiring. We're so lucky to have this mm. connection with you. 
Well, I hope that, um, as I told you before, CL, I was invited several times to your territory to look at your medicines and was canceled almost a few days before my plane flight. So I hope we can continue and make this um, in the future that I come to your territory to see your medicines and your backyard that you may know about them, but what the heck do I do with it after I get it home, you know? Would and I give very, very detailed notes, very detailed notes. I'm very generous with this knowledge I've researched through months and years I've been doing this. I share it all. And hopefully you'll look out for my book. I hope I'm going to write, hopefully by the end of the year, I'm going to write my book on traditional medicines. That would be amazing. It's uh, we often want to. I want to send some people somewhere to be able to learn more about this, and there really is a lack of resources out there. So, yes, yes, for sure. I appreciate your attention, everyone, and your patience in um, <laughs> in computer technology. That uh, I can go to medical school, but do you think I can figure out computers? <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Dr. Jeannie. Um, those of you still on the line, uh, we did have some um, gifts for people who arrived early. So Mary D. Lee, who I'm not sure um, who, would, that's just the screen name, Allison and Noella, all, um, we will have gifts for you next week. Um, I'll be reaching out to everyone and letting you know when you can come by Three Corners and pick them up. So. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeannie. Um, I will also send out all of Dr. Jeannie's contact information to everyone if you are interested in booking an appointment with her, and hopefully we will be able to connect with you again soon. So thank you again. Thank Take you, care, everyone. I lift my hands to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.